back to the Fourth Way Podcast. In this episode, we are rounding out our section in our propaganda season, uh, our section related to media propaganda. Um, in the last episode, or in the last section, I, uh, I talked about how corporate propaganda kind of surprised me in uh, the, the ubiquity of, uh, of propaganda and kind of the, the power of it. I didn't expect, you know, I expected it to be everywhere, but I didn't expect for corporate propaganda to have quite the power that it does because it seems so cheesy and obvious, right? Well, on the other hand, I expected media propaganda to be a whole lot more influential than, uh, than it ended up being. And it's not that it, it isn't influential at all. Uh, it's just that I didn't find nearly as much in regard to media propaganda as, as I thought I would. And I think it kind of makes sense that it works that way because in corporate propaganda, we don't expect to be influenced by cheesy commercials, right? We don't expect that there's anything more behind that product than that cheesiness. And so, okay, we're not going to be impacted by that. Yet there's so much that goes on behind it. So we underestimate it. But media propaganda, we kind of know that there's propaganda in the media and that it's subversive and uh, it, it, there's this undercurrent. And so I think a lot of times we are, we are really looking for this media propaganda. And we self-select our media for that reason. You know, you might be an only uh, watch Fox person or an only watch CNN or MSNBC person, but you know that there's media propaganda, and so you choose to only get propagandized by your source. And so even though that is that is influential in the way that you can kind of create these echo chambers, at the same time, we, we know that there's going to be propaganda in the media. And that's why... I think maybe one of the most important episodes in this section is in regard to uh, the the one on zombies. So the point of that was, and the power of media propaganda isn't in these big, huge things that you uh, that you would expect, right? I mean, it is there. Don't get me wrong. There are big, huge events that the media, uh, the propaganda of the media, is able to kind of gloss over or influence, one hundred percent for sure. But a lot of the power of the media uh, comes in in its ability to sedate on the, the normal things, on, on the smaller scale. And so if you go back to our zombie episode, we talk a lot about how, uh, how the media is kind of on those fringes, and we expect them to be on those fringes, uh, but it's really in the middle where, where everything um, kind of gets through, gets lost. And so they're not really identifying some of the, the deeper rooted true problems that exist. And in that sense, I mean the media is powerful. But whereas in corporate propaganda there's there's power in that it forms you more so, right? It, it creates a type of person which is extremely powerful to to change you and shape you into something else. Media propaganda focuses a lot more on or or its power comes in its silence, what it doesn't talk about, that it doesn't get you to think about. And certainly that is power. Again, don't get me wrong, that is power, but it's just different than I thought it would be. If you would have asked me beforehand, I would have thought that media propaganda is what really, really forms you, and corporate propaganda is just kind of childish. But, um, you know, it, it kind of tends to be inverted. And of course it all works together. So media propaganda in tandem with corporate propaganda and all that kind of stuff, very powerful. So I don't mean to say at all that media propaganda isn't powerful. It's just, it's different than what I expected. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the resource recommendations that I might have for you uh, throughout this season, or this section here. Uh, if you want to go back in time, uh, there was a lot of what they called muckraking back in the late 19th, early 20th centuries. Uh, muckrakers, muckrakers were just these journalists who would go and try to expose different things. So I don't remember what the book was called, but I, I read one about some uh, lady who infiltrated in a, uh, an asylum uh, so that she could see what the conditions were like and how the, the patients were treated. Uh, it was interesting. Um, but uh, the one that I'd recommend 
here is uh, famous. I think it's Upton Sinclair's uh, The Brass Check. He also wrote The Jungle, which is his famous one. But The Brass Check is particularly related to the media. And so that's insightful because I think a lot of times people think, oh, well, you know, it's so much worse today than it used to be. And you go and read The Brass Check and you're like, oh, I recognize those strategies or, oh, yeah, that that happens today. And so you see that in, there's nothing new under the sun and The Brass Check helps you to, to kind of see Upton Sinclair's uh, experience with cor- uh, media smearing and all that kind of stuff even back in the day. Of course, Dark Alliance by Gary Webb. I, I found the book kind of tedious. I actually liked uh, the movie about him. I uh, killed the messenger, uh, which was really good, and I, I thought pretty accurate to portraying what what Gary Webb's thoughts were, and not overstating his case. Uh, but Dark Alliance, I mean, it would be worth it if if this is an area that you're interested in, then that would be worth it. He he gets to explain himself pretty well, and I'm I'm also going to link a few. Uh, there's at least one YouTube interview that he has, uh, or a speech or something, and it, he explained things really well. Uh, and I'd recommend that. There's, uh, if you listened to the episode with my interview of Robert Mirapol, whose parents uh, were executed for uh, conspiracy to commit espionage, his his book, An Execution in the Family, uh, and then there's another book about him, I forget uh, what it's called, but it's more of a biography that somebody else wrote. But his book, An Execution in the Family, uh, I thought it was really good. There were a number of reviewers who didn't like it too much, but I thought it was really good. It was a, a really interesting insight into his life, and he's he was a good writer. And when you look at that book, he he doesn't talk a ton about the media propaganda, but he definitely talks a bit about it and how he experienced propaganda of uh, you know being smeared and and kind of people's views of him and his his. Uh, experience giving interviews which is interesting you know the the way that the the media is able to kind of shape discussions and cut out what they want to cut out so i recommend his book uh robert mirapol's an execution in the family then you've got a bunch from neil postman i think media controls by him but I don't, i'm not sure uh, but then he definitely has amusing ourselves to death how to watch tv new news uh, those are, are two good ones by Neil Postman. And I think Postman, he's dated at this point, I guess 30 years uh, old. I guess his books would be about 30 years old. But really good, really insightful, I think. And then there's one that I read, which I was able to get like 100 pages in, and then it just, oof, it it dried up. And it was a, a very good book, and and talking with um, talking with uh, Doctor Wellman in our uh, race series about uh, homeschool curriculum was helpful because you know she she said that um, she was like well look if it's if it's really boring you know that it's probably good or or you're on the right track because good history or more objective history is probably going to be boring. There's not going to be an infusion of all kinds of uh, subjective feelings and and, uh, conclusions. So this book, Manipulating the Masses, is really fantastic. It's just really boring because there's so many facts and details and things. But uh, this Manipulating the Masses also goes back to kind of the brass check era and it looks specifically in the United States in the formation of things like um, the OSS. So a while ago I read a, a biography on Bill Donovan, who was a big part of the OSS. Uh, and so that, that leads you into then the CIA and, and other sorts of organizations. But this manipulating the mass is about World War I and uh, uh, propaganda kind of arising and the different organizations that Woodrow Wilson created and, and uh, you know, all the different players. You get lots of different, lots of famous players that you see. If you're going to study propaganda, you see tons of these names like Creel and Bernays and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so manipulating the masses, if you want a, a thick, uh, good account, but uh, dry and just factual, uh, get manipulating the masses. And what's fascinating about this time in history is that 
you know, in the United States, we have this mythology that uh, we're, we're this land of liberty, right? You know, we fought back against like a, I don't know, a really tiny tax and, you know, we showed them. And a few years later, we go and we, we uh, suppress a rebellion because we're charging super high taxes in the United States. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's so not true. And in manipulating the masses, you get, you get a vision of that. There was a ton, a ton, absolute ton of suppression of the the media and the media went right along with it they're like yep for the war you know we need to we need to not say anything about uh this battle or say anything about uh you know our troops not having enough of this so there's a ton of silencing in that uh and and we see that even into today right so if you see it 100 years ago 100 percent, it's going to be around today just the other day i was reading a, an article about uh, i think it was the second iraq war and how they're, I forget the exact name, but they were called like media force or force multipliers. And uh, you basically, there they would be all these, these guys who would go onto, uh, onto news stations as experts, right? You know, they were former, former Marine, former general or whatever. And they'd, they'd say all these things, um, but they were basically on pay by the Bush administration to talk up the war and sell it, right? Uh, so we do this kind of stuff today, that the media is in league with the government officials in in selling you the stories that they want to sell you. And you can see that very clearly in manipulating the masses. We have tons of documents. Uh, Freedom of Information Act applies to tons of stuff back then. You know, that stuff, a lot of that stuff isn't as top secret as it as it used to be. And so we, we can learn a lot about 100 years ago that we wouldn't have access to today. And what you see 100 years ago you know that government reach just extends and extends and extends, and you're certainly going to see it today. Manipulating the masses, once again, would highly recommend it. You just prepare to uh, dig in. Uh, also, it's not... I, I didn't find it in manipulating the masses, but uh, there's some other good things going on around this time. Uh, I, forget, I forget which book I read about the American Revolution, uh, but uh, in, in that book... The author mentioned uh, this this interesting case that was going on right around the time uh, of, that manipulating the masses is writing about, and it's uh, it's called the case of uh, I guess the United States versus the spirit of seventy six, and you've got this this filmmaker who is creating a, a, a film about the Revolutionary War, and as as he creates this film, there's like a three second clip where. Uh, it's just like flashes of the British soldiers uh, committing atrocities. And of course, you know, you're talking like 1917 or something, and they're not like showing gore and, and crazy. It's just these quick flashes that imply, you know, a, a British person is bayoneting uh, a woman or child or something. And uh, so you, you've got just three seconds of that. A revolutionary war, right? Well, this guy, this filmmaker he ends up getting like 10 years in prison. And they, they end up like lowering the sentence later. But he gets 10 years in prison because that's considered seditious. Because Great Britain was our ally. And so to paint them in a negative light could create a lot of um, you know, disorder and, and rebellion in the United States or uh, could cause our allies to lose faith in us. Whatever the reasons, we we're locking up people for making movies that depict something historically because it paints a friend in a bad light. I mean, insane stuff going on at this time. Um, so it's, it's super interesting. And then you can, you can follow the history from there of uh, you know, the, the different organizations as they develop through time and become what we have today. All right, so beyond books and, uh, and such, what are some other recommendations that we might have? Uh, uh, Behind the Bastards has done like a, a short series on Gary Webb or the crack epidemic, uh, so that might be interesting for you to, to check out. Um, manufacturing Consent, I believe that's from Chomsky. Uh, that's, that's a fantastic book, but they also have lots of YouTube videos on it. You can give some speeches, and they also made a, a good quality uh, kind of summary of that book. There's a, a video called War on Whistleblowers you can get on YouTube, which is is really good, uh, really fantastic. Uh, um, 
And it doesn't always relate exactly to the media, but uh, a lot of times it does. Another uh, interesting uh, thing is a freeway crack in the system. It's a, a, a documentary about the, the crack epidemic. Uh, more specifically related to, to uh, the media, you could take a look at the documentary on YouTube called Spin. It is, I think if you're going to look at one resource here uh, for your time and for the quality of this thing, check this out. The Spin documentary on YouTube. It's kind of old. I mean, I, I think he, the guy who did this made it, I don't know, like 90s maybe? Early 90s? Because they had the satellite technology and he basically learned how to, uh, to tap into that because these news stations, they were constantly recording, but they weren't always broadcasting to the channel that you picked up on your TV. But if you knew what you were doing you could tap into the, the frequency or the airwaves, somehow, whatever, technical stuff, and you could actually capture what was going on when they went to commercial break and stuff. And so this guy just spent like a year looking at the good stuff, right? The stuff that happened when people didn't think the cameras were rolling. Uh, politicians, uh, important people. Fascinating. Like, really fascinating to see how things were framed. Uh, and this is even well before you know, social media and, and all that kind of stuff where it seems like framing an image has gotten even more uh, pronounced in our society. So check out the Spin documentary. It's like an hour, hour and a half. So easy, easy to consume and great quality. You could also take a look into uh, Michael Hastings. Michael Hastings is um, a journalist who was uncovering some some crazy things, and then he died mysteriously. And so there's there's a lot of interesting stuff if you want to take a look into his work as well as into the case of his death. Uh, another one would be uh, GameStop, the GameStop um, stocks that came out, uh, or the, the short sale that happened in regard to Robinhood and, and all those other uh, stock apps. So I haven't really found a ton written on this, but I can tell you anecdotally that it was one of the weirdest things that I've experienced firsthand uh, where I was like, man, I'm in the matrix. So when, uh, to kind of summarize for those who don't know what the GameStop uh, short sale was, so basically uh, you had a bunch of people who decided that, uh, you know, GameStop stock was... Um, was, I don't know all the proper terms, it was like leveraged. You had a bunch of rich people as brokerage firms who were like, oh, GameStop is is going to do terrible. And so they all like put a bet that GameStop is going to do terribly. Well, these people figured out that, man, they were, they were over leveraged. They had like too much on it. And so if they just bought GameStop stock and held on to it, the price would just rise and rise and rise and rise until these people would have to sell for a loss or hang on and hope that it eventually went down. And so these guys hung on to this stock and made tons and tons of money. And more and more people started to buy into it because you have these these newer apps that allow the hoi polloi, you know, the, the plebs to uh, all the individuals to actually participate in the stock market. Well... All of a sudden, as I'm following this thing, I see like all of these news outlets. I mean, every news outlet you can think of, from Fox to NBC to uh, like GameSpot to uh, Coca Two or whatever that that one's called. Like all kinds of all kinds of uh, different news outlets, and they're saying, "Hey, um, you know, Wall Street Bets, this this Reddit, this subreddit group that." Um, that is telling everybody to buy a GameStop stock and hold on to it. They're like, "Hey, everybody, um, you know, the, they're telling everybody to sell their GameStop stock and uh, and now go buy Nokia, right?" And then I was following. I was on the uh, the Wall Street Bets subreddit, and everybody on there, all the like main players, are like, "No, don't sell, don't sell, don't buy this other stock." And I'm I'm sitting here and I'm just looking in one tab. I've got Reddit, like the people tell, telling don't sell and don't buy this other stuff, and all the news outlets saying, oh, this is what they're saying on the subreddit. 
And I was like, oh my goodness, this is like, I am experiencing this in real time. I'm experiencing conspiracy in real time. It was, it was surreal. Um, and so that was, that was just fascinating to see all the news outlets. You know, I could have expected, okay, there'd be, there'd be some that are kind of in league, but it was just so crazy that it was like everybody. Um, and, and I could compare it to the real thing, like side by side. So that's not something that I've, I've really seen shared around. I haven't seen uh, lots of articles or anything written on it, but that was just one of my own personal experiences that I thought was interesting. Uh, I would love for other people to validate that, or, or maybe you have some resources you could share. All right, a few other resources here um, that, that I didn't get to read, but I would like to read them at some point. So Hearts and Minds looked like a really good book. I actually started to read it like a chapter in, but I moved on to some other things, but I want to come back to it. Hearts and Minds, not mind, but minds, as in like landmines. Uh, there's How We Advertised America, Manufacturing the Enemy, Spin Dictators, a Century of Spin, A.J. Leibling's The Press, which is an older one. I don't know that I'd, I'd prioritize that, but it looked interesting. And then Inventing Reality. All that stuff looked like it was... Uh, it was pretty interesting. So I think that's that's pretty much what I have for uh, the media aspect. Again, there's so much more. Check out, uh, you know, do your own research. Also check out my, my Goodreads list. I'm sure I've probably missed some. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll add resources uh, if I think of any before this releases. That's all for now. So peace, and because I'm a pacifist, when I say it, I mean it. This podcast is a part of the Kingdom Outpost Network. Please check out the links below to find other great podcasts and content related to nonviolence and kingdom living.